Now that you've downloaded the data, I'll show you how to read and parse the files in Python. So you'll end up with something like this, and then you'll take the first six columns, which are the accelerometer and gyroscope data, and parse them out into their own lists so that that way you can plot it in the next step. I think I want to expose you to yet another IDE here. So from Anaconda Navigator, let's go ahead and launch the Jupyter Notebook which is an IDE that's often used uh, analogously to the way that a scientist would use a scientific lab notebook. When it launches, you should see a view like this inside your browser. Um, this folder is displaying a view that's inside your user folder. So on Windows, that would be C drive, users, and then your username. Um, if you want to, you can create a folder for saving these projects in, or you could just create one in the root for your user folder. Um, but either way, go to new and then Python 3 notebook. Let's name this right away by clicking up here. Let's call it step counter. And you'll see how this works as we go along, but briefly the Python statements you type in these boxes that say in, and then you can run the in boxes in whatever order you want, and each one will produce a corresponding output, which is displayed permanently in a page that you can scroll up and down. So without further ado, let's create an empty list called lines. Then we'll open the file and we'll have the file path here and we'll have a file name as well and we'll create those in a second. And we're gonna open it as reader and then we'll say lines, oops, equals reader.readlines. This is where you'll need to remember the path to your data. Um, on mine, it was D drive, Java workspaces, Python, data. On PCs, your, your path folder names are separated by backslashes. On Macs, they're separated by forward slashes. But I think that that's going to work on the PC also, so let's give it a try. Um, I'm going to define the path as a string, which will be the D drive with a forward slash, and then the rest of my path string. And you go to enter your own and I'll end with a trailing slash so that that way I can specify my file name here. Um, so I'll have name equals, let's use the file 4-100-step-running.csv. And then uh, with this inbox selected, you can click run um, and you see nothing display because it's run without error. Um, in order to see something, you would need to, for example, print lines, which I'll do in a second input box. And now you can see this is uh, the list of the individual line strings that we've read from the file. Let's actually take a look at the first five. So rather than typing a new command down here, I'm just going to modify the thing I'm displaying. So I'm going to use a slice where I'm going to display just the first uh, five lines. So we see uh, we got one line that's the header line that tells us what the uh, different columns are named, and then we have some data that starts out with all zeros, but then we start recording sensor data there in the next line. So what I want to do is I want to split out each of the columns. So I want the accelerometer X to be its own list and accelerometer Y to be its own list. So uh, list comprehensions are a great way to do this. So I'm going to call it uh, accelerate, accelerometer X. All right, and there we have it. So now let's uh, plot the data. So I'm going to remove the print statement for this box and instead have a new input where I'll say import matplotlib pi plot as plt. Um, and then I'm going to have a special command here that controls how the, the plots display in the Jupyter Notebook. And I'll tell you what it means in a minute, but let's go ahead and run that. Great. Um, and so now let's make a basic plot. So I'll say plt.plot um, and let's plot the accelerometer x data and I'll plot it as blue dashes and then plot.show and we'll run it and you see that's what it looks like. So what this uh, thing starting with the percent sign did was it made this sort of rescalable, zoomable data. So I can grab this little tab in the corner and rescale it. <clears throat> um, this zooms, so if I wanna zoom in just here so that I can see what's happening more clearly, uh, I can. Let's zoom again. <clears throat> I can uh, save it, I can pan back and forth in the data, uh, and then I can 
go to home, which unzooms. So this is a sort of a helpful way to explore what your data looks like uh, if your step counting is going wrong and you want to analyze why. If you don't want to zoom and you only want to plot some of your data, of course you could use a slice. So we could start at index 400 and go up to index 600, for example, run it again and you see uh, just zoomed part of the data. Although the difference is we didn't zoom here. We have started index zero in the x-axis as uh, what used to be index 400 there.